I better not get copyright flagged for that. Just saying. This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world is Jared Morgan. Hello, everyone. How are you going? Also joining us today in what was supposed to be just a, hey, how's it going conversation, but then a bombshell drop this week. Hey, everybody. It's Mel Kirk. <laughs> What's up, guys? Everybody watching? Uh, good to be here. Good to see you all. Again, yeah, a little bombshell of this last week. Yeah, just a little. So just uh, some news. <laughs> some minor, <laughs> you know, that somebody might have been hoping for at some point in time. Um, it's like been, forever. <laughs> I think the last time we had you on was in April, so almost nine months yeah. that uh, since we've had a chat. And yeah, just a few things have uh, happened in those nine months with uh, Zen in general. Oh my god! I swear it was just yesterday. I mean, seriously, <laughs> <laughs> April. April. Yeah, wow. April. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, that's been a long time, and a lot has happened. But it feels like it was just yesterday. So. <laughs> I bet. Um, I mean, just kind of a quick rundown of what's happened. Obviously, uh, your designs were able to get back into the studio. Uh, you guys released Zen Pinball Party. You had told us in April that we would have eleven new tables to be able to play by the end of 2021 and shock of shocks. Hey, there's a, or at least we'd know of 11 tables. I should say three of them aren't actually playable yet, but uh, yeah. And then this last week, you tell us that Indiana Jones is coming and yeah. not just coming to <clears throat> pinball effects, but coming to FX three as well, which like really was a shock of shocks. Yeah. Uh, we just, you know, we've been working on indie for a really long time. And uh, I'll just say that a lot, it took a lot longer than we thought. We thought this game would be out. And so when we look at where we are with the crossroads of Pinball FX, FX3, we just decided the right thing to do is put the game out um, on all platforms in all, anywhere we can possibly get it because it's indie. And um, we didn't want to put that game behind um, any, anywhere, or any, any kind of platform that somebody didn't have access to. So uh, it's just, it's important for the love of pinball, for the love of this game. We wanted to do it this way. We were trying to figure out, you had, <laughs> I had Joe trying to look it up and he couldn't find it. You had no. posted a tweet that it was something of the nature of, ah, a Holy Grail license has come through. <laughs> I don't know if you remember <laughs> tweeting that, we couldn't find it, so then we're like, maybe Mel had to delete it. But we were trying to figure out when that was, because that was, I think, our first indication that, ah, Indy is coming. That, I did tweet that. I don't remember when. I may have had to delete it, but that's how long ago this all started coming together. I would say that the reason years. why we got Williams was because this this moment was um, what we were after, and this is what uh, the, the folks over at Williams and the folks at Disney wanted to see happen. It just took this long to get it done because the licensing is really, really complicated. Can you go into a little bit of what is involved with licensing? Because, I mean, previously, I think everybody kind of figured, you know, Adam's Family, and obviously you guys haven't been able to do Adam's Family yet, but Adam's Family was considered a very difficult license to get all the, you know, disparate sections put together with Indy pretty much everybody going, oh, that's nigh impossible. So what are some of the kind of aspects that you can actually reveal to us that go into licensing this kind of thing and getting yeah. it all put together well i have to be careful how i say it yes. here because mm -hmm. um there's there's a lot of uh sensitivities on a lot of sides of the of of this but you know there, there's a uh, voice mm -hmm. um authentic voice clips in uh, indiana jones pinball adventure and so there's a number of actors and people that you have to work through um to make sure that it's okay to use those and get the proper rights we're going to have all the voice in our game which is really cool you have the music, which is uh, original John Williams masterpiece, but been synthesized into a different kind of a form. And there's several loops, some of which are very short, some of which are long, some of which are, was this actually music or was this original? We had to, we had to sort through all of that. And that yeah. took a lot of time. Luckily, all of the music from the original game is in our game as well. Then you have the artwork, uh, which has uh, likeness um, of, of a lot of actors, some of who are with us today and some of who aren't. 
And so you have to work through a number of rights and, uh, and approvals. Then you get to that. And then, and then, you know, our part of what we're doing is not just recreating um, the game as it was, we're doing this modernized version of it. And so we wanted to animate Indiana Jones as a 3d model. And that takes another set of, uh, of working through. So you add all this stuff up and it's not, it's not just clear. I mean, you have to get in touch with tons of people and then, uh, you know, and then you, and you make sure you got to negotiate the deals and you got to get it all done. And at the end of the day, once everybody is signed and everything is okay, then you're actually clear to proceed with production. So wow. it was a long time. Um, there's another very, uh, very big game that we're working on. I thought the licensing was going to be more difficult. I've been told it would be more difficult, not even close. So <laughs> all right. uh, this is probably, in my opinion, the most difficult one that we, we, we could do. Um, I'm just really happy that we have a, a, a launch in front of us very soon. Yeah, it's and it's authentic. It's one hundred percent authentic. All the voice, all the music, all the art, uh, everything, and uh, and every single part of the game is is being done uh, faithfully recreated. The rolling demo for it looks incredible. The one that's actually being revealed on the pinball show. It looks very very sleek. All the assets seem incredibly high detail, and I imagine that's probably got something to do with your work with Unreal um, and what you've been able to get um, fidelity wise in the in the game with that particular title because it's coming to both the px engine in fx3 and unreal in pinball fx were there any real challenges trying to get the 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 game over the line with those two disparate systems yeah i mean it was extra work there i wouldn't say that there was any any bigger challenge than any game we've ever done in px before or um, the new work that's being done in unreal I, we haven't. We get a lot more experience in Unreal now. We have uh, multiple tables and games that have been released, so the entire team now is very familiar. And the workflow, the speed at which we can do things, is rapidly increasing, which is good news for more content in the future. But I would say we learned our lessons and cut our teeth on some previous projects, um, and so things were pretty smooth here. But there is a difference in graphical fidelity from what we get with Unreal. Um, you know, I do think that it's gonna you're gonna have a, a better look. And some of the, the the shadows, the um, the rails, just things that the lighting, you know, that's all going to be improved. Uh, but a lot of people are in Pinball FX3. A lot of people don't have a PS5 or Xbox Series X. Uh, a lot of people don't want to go to Steam, whatever. We still want you to be able to play indie at this point. It's just like this is kind of a capstone thing for us, like mm -hmm. a, a moment for Zen in our pinball journey to say we were able to accomplish this. So we just, you know, other things that matter kind of go out the window at that point. Um, and we're just really happy to bring this. Not to mention it's nice to be able to just pin this as the 100th table. Mm -hmm. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's the 100th table. Um, so uh, it's exciting. It's crazy, right? I mean, yeah. 100. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to close off right? the legacy that is F FX3. It's, it's a huge legacy. It's been going on for years now, right? Yeah, it is. Um, I would. I was really hoping it would go on longer. Uh, I always go back. You know, I get asked the question still from people. Why is, you know, why FX? I'm like, well, we had a really big decision about technology going into the future and we can no longer keep up our engine. And so I really think that pinball FX built on technology that is going to be, you know, continued to scale and available on, on new consoles. That is the reason why we made this decision. And pinball FX is going to have a legacy, I think, uh, just, just as great, uh, you know, as FX3, FX2. I think it'll be a game that we're really setting up for long term future. Really happy with what we accomplished with FX3. Um, would have been nice to squeeze a little bit more out of it and maybe have more content there. But um, I, we did what we could. I mean, 100 tables is just a small bit of content all the same, right? Um, yeah, and a lot of that, right, going back all the way to 2010. Yeah, uh, yeah. You've just been able to play the game. We just upgraded the platform and kept the collection intact. I'm really happy with how many tables are coming to FX. I mean, we're really, we've announced we're only really losing two, and I'm hopeful that maybe some point we could kind of rescue those there's some licensing challenges but it's, it's really good so I'm, I'm kind of curious with regards to you guys tackling this license with indie does that happen to raise the cachet of zen in the minds of other people that might have been hesitant with their ips um or does i mean does it pave the way does it set a bar that makes it maybe easier to acquire uh some of these other licenses because obviously any content, you know, all the rest of the DMDs 
for for Williams and Bally are all licensed. Um, if eventually you guys do, you know, sign up with a, you know one of these other pinball manufacturers, they're all doing licensed stuff. So I'm just kind of curious: does this help pave the way forward on that? I think it's a significant, uh, you know, feather in our cap, so to mm -hmm. speak. Uh, I, I think our licensing history is, you know, pretty robust and pretty it remarkable is. when you think about it, especially when we're doing that as Zen Studios pre-acquisition days. Um, so there are some games that we were trying to go get that people were kind of, they didn't know if, if it really comes down to bandwidth. Um, you know, is it worth it to do it? And it's like, well, do you want to be alongside this great collection? Um, and we do, you know, we do really well with these games. Um, it, it is going to help open up some doors. Um, but I would say that like what we want to work on, we're able, to, we're, we're definitely able to work on it. Um, nobody just tells us no, like bug off. And <laughs> so uh, that's, not, it's really just, uh, you know, prioritization, which I think I always tell you guys, it's always like, what is the priority? We have a million things we could be doing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Unreal a little bit. Uh, did you happen to see the latest demo for Unreal 5 where they were doing it with the, uh, was it a Matrix Awakens, I think is what they called it or whatever. Um, but they kind of broke down all the various aspects of, you know, some of the highlights of what is available in Unreal 5. And I know you guys are doing with Unreal 4 right now, but there's a lot of things that popped up in that that I was just like, oh my God, this would make pinball, you know, this could work in a pinball machine so easily. <laughs> um, so just kind of, You've hinted about in the pinball show that there's things that you guys have now discovered with working on Unreal. Uh, for instance, having the HD video, being able to now be utilized and stuff. What are some of the, the, the things that you guys are looking to take advantage of with this engine? Okay. Yes, um, I did see the Matrix uh, demo. I have it downloaded. I haven't played it yet. Been a little preoccupied the last couple of weeks. I only watched um, the YouTube video, so. <laughs> yeah, me too. I, like the, I, I do still like to play stuff. I want to play it. I want to see it myself. Um, but yeah, actually, in the next episode of the Pinball Show, we are going to be showing off a lot of the um, things that we had hinted at. Oh, cool. So oh, um, awesome. you're going to see gameplay with um, ray tracing. You're going to see um, Ooh, um, nice. HDR, um, 4K. Uh, we're working on, I mean, these t the games are looking incredible. I think that there is a marked difference between FX3 and FX. And uh, what we are, you know, as we polish games and as we get into the details of, of the lighting, the things that are like bells and whistles, which we're really adding into all the new games that we're making, um, I think that they're really going to shine. And for us, too, this is a way to separate ourselves from any other pinball developers out there, you know, we still, it's good to have competition and we see what others are doing. It's like, all right, well, ratchet up, you know, quality and, uh, and awesome features and things that really push the limits of what can be done. Unreal affords us, uh, those, those bells and whistles. I mean, I think just as an example, um, the, the, for those that don't know, the pinball effects page has gone up, I guess that you might call it on, uh, Epic games. And there's some screenshots and one of those screenshots, we have mm -hmm. with the Curse of the Mummy table here. And just, I mean, the lighting on this is insane. You know, seeing little particle effects kind of floating up there. There's just this lovely glow across the entire thing. Uh, this looks wildly different than the last time you showed anything on the pinball show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, you know, as, as our guys are able to spend time in, in like, you're, you're seeing a polished, finished, near-finished product there. Yeah. Um, you know, and one of the really cool things about <clears throat> what, what the, the evolution I think we're seeing here is the ball in, in, in video game pinball has always kind of seemed to maybe float or just kind mm. of have this, uh, like almost like it's in a cloud effect and it's not maybe uh, the, the ball itself isn't very de definitive. There were some tech videos that came out a while back that showed it was like this hundred, uh, it was a ball that was going through like a hundred different pinball fields. I don't know if you guys caught it. I mean, yeah. I yeah, so yeah. I, I sent that to, uh, Akosh to check out. Okay. I was like, maybe you sent it to him and he sent it to me. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how it went. Cause he hadn't <laughs> seen it before incredible. I sent it to him. See, that is what we're pushing towards. And, um, there's definition of the ball and it's a, you can, it feels like it's different on the play. It's hard to describe in words, but when you, when you play pinball and you see it, you know what I'm, exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, mm. and so I think that that's, that's where we're going to get to. Um, and you know, we'll go to unreal five once it's, 
you know, once it, it's in our hands and it, it's, it's ready and we, we can do all that, but where we were in the, in the dev cycle for PFX, it, it's UE4 right now, but you know, mm -hmm. the upgrade and, and all that will, uh, will happen at some point. Do you think that there's going to be any issue with, and I'm going back to the comparison, basically Indy having been both created at the same time in both PX and Unreal, this is going to be the first time we were, we were able to actually do apples to apples comparison of the two engines. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that has been noticed, obviously with uh, Mobile FX3, the, it was designed at 60 frames. And although you could unlock it and have it run at a higher frame rate, all of a sudden the ball started behaving differently. Um, and I was noticing that the flippers, it felt like you had more degrees of angle with which to shoot the ball, but that it made it kind of more difficult. And I'm assuming that with the Unreal version, it is going to be running at a higher frame rate. So I'm curious to know, is there going to be any kind of problems to deal with with the physics with that? Is there, you know, different collision detections that that is going to actually cause the game to maybe play different between the two formats? Well, it's all, there's a lot of balance that goes on there. And this is part of the reason why it's taking a while to get the game done. Um, you know, pro physics implementation is very important. We, it's, it's clear to us that's the way that, um, uh, you know, a large number of our players, probably the most vocal players want to want to have things uh and so yeah i mean all all those things add up there, there's little concessions if you want better uh, visual fidelity what happens to physics what happens to friction on the table so you find this kind of sweet spot then you massage it then if you want to it's about time how much time do you want to spend on it to, <laughs> to to tinker and then still you know we always open ourselves up to people who are going to say oh this is you know this is not real it doesn't it, it doesn't feel good it does feel good um so we're we're going for the best, uh, you know. Very like there's a sweet spot, right? So, I'd imagine that you know, and this is a pretty common common way that Zen does things. They they iterate rapidly and they get something out there, get the feedback and data on it, and then adjust it according to that data. So I'd imagine that you don't really want to gold plate this too much before you release it. You want to gold plate it just enough, mm -hmm. but then look at the data, get the feedback, and roll it in incrementally after that. Yeah, and that's why uh, this early access thing is really important for us because uh, there's even more some more surprises coming that you know we haven't revealed yet. And we want to test all this stuff. It may work, it may not, but um, we've always been a, um, a studio that's not afraid to innovate. Um, you know, and so this early access period is really just to say, hey, everybody, here's a bunch of options, and here's what the gameplay is. Here's what we think is really good. Um, we have new technology that has pushed this. But we can tinker with it either way to when it feels really good. And then deploy across all platforms. Um, to do that all a day one is is not smart anymore. That's just mm. not a thing you do, um, especially with how much content we're going to be pushing through there. The 100 tables um, obviously need to get done, all remastered and pushed through. And then, holy cow, the floodgates are opening for for new ones. <laughs> so, um, you know, th this early access will will help make sure that the game is solid and stable. Um, the new things that are going on are well accepted and and liked or we just rip it out and we just say, okay, we tried something cool. didn't work. Uh, whereas before mm. you would have been stuck, right? You would have just been, uh Oh, what do we do now? Right. This allows us to finish development of those important things. And uh, also make sure our publishing pipeline is just up to, uh, up to snuff for what is coming. You're going to have to get, in, we're going to have to get in quite a rhythm of basically every two weeks is a major submission to first party. So, wow. uh, okay. you know, it is, it is alive. This game is <laughs> living and breathing. Actually, uh, sorry, I, know you, I was going to, I was curious actually how early access on Epic works. So if you've got a game on early access and it's got DLC in it, do you just buy it through like you would normally and then it just carries over to the new game? Is that how it works? Yeah. Anything you buy in early access carries over to the new game. Okay. Yeah. And, um, like, you know, there's, uh, there's just, there's going to be new options for how you buy content, how you can get it, you know, um, dancing around a few big subjects here, but um, we'll be, <laughs> look, it's gonna be January, right? The next time we talk to people yeah. and then uh, February and then man, March. So uh, we're gonna, it'll all, it's been a massive project to, uh, to see if we can pull off what we wanna pull off. I know that you had mentioned, uh, and I, I've already hinted about it, but uh, you were talking about doing, being able to do 
full motion video in the DMD. Well, except for it's not a DMD anymore. Now you're talking about a video screen with Curse of the Mummy specifically being the one that uh, that's up there. We'd seen when we'd seen footage of the uh, noir. It was obviously dot matrix. Um, and then I'm thinking of things like even the Mandalorian table where it was all dot matrix. Is there any kind of shift or any desire to go back and like, no, you know what? Let's make that full motion video instead. Yeah. I mean, there's a desire. We'd love to do that. You know, look, look at our library. I, I would love to do with dinosaurs with Jurassic park. I'd like to do with jaws and, <laughs> you know, but to, uh, that would require significant, uh, but you might as well just make the table like again. Oh, okay. So right. It's okay. probably not going to happen with anything, uh, in, you know, in our library from before this. Is that the same kind of thought that goes into uh, if you were to colorize any of the DMDs? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's all logic that, and, you know, those assets are very difficult to work on. There's not a lot of flexibility. Um, as with a lot of pinball stuff, you know, uh, you, it really kind of requires a redesign and a rework entirely from scratch. Okay. And there's only so much patience for that, as we, <laughs> we've come to understand from uh, from our very passionate Fancy. Right, right. <laughs> uh, curious. Did Zen place its order for a Cactus Canyon remake? <laughs> 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 I know you can't talk about that. Um, what did you though? <laughs> this kind of leads us into just like what's happening in pinball today, because obviously, uh, my God, it's exploding. Like, it. It seems like the train was chugging, chugging, chugging. Now it's like just at full speed going forward again. We've got mm -hmm. multiple boutique, you know, boutique pinball studios uh, making, you know, full scale pinball machines. Um, you've got these remakes happening of older machines that are looking incredible. The added detail that they put on, and then I'm thinking about. I don't know if you paid any attention to that uh, auction from the museum yeah. of pinball and banning that and the prices that were going for those it just kind of what are your thoughts in general on what's happening in pinball i think it's you know pinball has been cyclical for many many generations you can say at this point but i think we're in a moment where this is going to be the longest uh cycle or and it might not even end um we might be mm. in a in a golden era that we haven't seen before for with pinball um I know that Stern is doing really well. I know Jersey Jack's doing really well. We talked with Spooky recently. They're doing really well. It's great to see that, that you know, all three of those companies are, are really accelerating all the little parts and boutique companies like you talked about. Uh, I have a lot of friends there. They're doing well. I thought we're really good friends with the IFPA. Josh and Zach, you know, mm -hmm. are also affiliated with uh, Raw Thrills and with Stern. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk, everyone is like, man, this is like awesome right now, you know, People just, I think coming out of, so with COVID, there could have been something where they weren't going on vacation and they were investing in their home game room and a pinball machine was like something that they had to have. Um, our arcade went up. Again, I go back to how crazy that is. We can't even come close to filling demand. So at all price points, all the way down, you know, and everybody associated with the industry right now, it feels like everybody is doing really, really well. Um, obviously, Zen, we, we can't. We, we're not meeting demand uh, at all. Um, with, you know, the amount of content we can put out and all the first parties, everybody wants a pinball platform from Zen. Um, it's a game that is just, it's easy to understand. Um, you put a license on it and it appeals to people. Huge, wide demographic. Um, we haven't even started to get into Asia yet. Uh, I mean, just talking about the industry as a yeah. whole. It's like Tetris or slots, mm -hmm. right? And so it's just, it's one of those things that is, um, that people can enjoy. Um, and be casual with or hardcore with it appeals to all those so all these things and everything now that pinball is intersecting social media we have some streamers we have some personalities attached to it it's just helping all these little things are helping to elevate it and raise the game's profile um even people who maybe thought pinball was a game for like their grandfather or their their dad's generation they're discovering it so it's becoming generational and it's becoming something that uh you know generations enjoy together so it's really it's a good moment i think it's I think it's uh, unprecedented what we're seeing with the game today. Yeah, I think Jared can speak to the generational aspect with because he introduced his kids. Well, he's got machines and he's had, you know taking them to go play it. But uh, we specifically had him throw Zen pinball party in front of his kids just to see which tables they would gravitate towards. And Jared, I can let you take mm. it over from there. It was a really interesting experiment because I knew that you know the Zen pinball party is is all about bridging that generational gap with pinball. And I thought, well, let's let's put it to the test. And what I did is, I uh, my kids are eleven and eight, 
and one's a girl and one's a boy. So I thought, well, this is a good test. Let's see what happens. And it was interesting. Um, I gave Zachary the the tablet, said, right, go and experience. I said, go and have a look at the new ones first, like the new animated heroes tables, play those. And he said, oh, yeah, okay. I went and did that. But then he gravitated back to the Williams again Mm -hmm. because he's used to playing Williams in arcades. He's had the the advantage of actually going into Netherworld and and -hmm. playing these games that are actually in Zen Pinball Party. And he felt uh, a closer affinity with those actual real world tables. But then Sienna started playing the game and she really enjoyed the animated aspects of the, of the tables. She found them you know, quote unquote hard, <laughs> but <laughs> she really enjoyed going in there and seeing things like trolls and, and my little pony and all these sort of really big IPs that resonate with her. So that was really interesting to see how two different age groups, not that far apart, can find completely different things in Zen Pinball Party. And it's very much like an arcade, isn't it? Like you start the game up, you walk into it by actually starting up the game, and then you look around and you gravitate to things that interest you when you're going into the game. And that was really evident when the my two kids were playing it. Yeah, well, that's, that's great to hear. Thank you for sharing that experience. Um, Zen Pinball Party in particular does have a very wide variety in very wide appealing, uh, you know, offering in terms of the IPs. One hand, you have the Williams, which appeals to anybody who grew up in arcades or knows those classic uh, games. You've got some Zen originals, which, you know, are colorful and kind of have a few different themes. And yeah, Snoopy and now Garfield and Trolls and How to Train Your Dragon. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, fun for all ages that you're going to find something there that hopefully appeals to you. That's what we're trying to do is on Pinball Party. Um, I have to be very careful about what I talk about because it's a subscription service um, with Apple. I'll just say it's doing amazing, it's doing really, really well for us. And uh, a lot of people are playing. I think we have a lot of new pinball players from that game. Um, if you can, I'm curious to know, is the idea with Zen Pinball Party that like some of the Zen originals and some of the Williams tables are going to rotate uh, what's in and what's out? Or is it always going to be building more or... How is that? How is the what is the vision for that? I should say. Okay, uh, it should always just be building more with Williams and Zen titles. Um, okay. The other ones, you know, that we that we have licenses for uh, the, the new stuff. We have a like with any license, we have a term, right? That could sure. expire if they don't want to renew it. So that's that's mm-hmm. really the only reason why those would ever go away. But it's not a rotational sort of a thing. It's just this collection is going to keep growing and growing. Okay. We were wondering if it was going to be kind of like what when we discussed a long time ago, <laughs> the the machine that you were going to have in the you know Dave and Buster's and all locations, mm-hmm. where you said that it was going to be kind of a rotation of what is in, uh, you know, each week kind of thing. I was like, I wonder if Zen Pimple is kind of like the next phase of that kind of idea. But so it'll just instead no, just because, keep on building. Yeah, Zen Pimple Party. It's like you know someone's got a game there, they subscribe to a service, they get that in in uh, in the location based game, which by the way we're we're ramping up again now that. COVID's getting behind us. It's more about you don't want people spending uh, a minute trying to select what game to play. Right. So mm. uh, because that's about turnover. They want people playing the game and, you know, swiping their card to play a new game and it, you got to get people on and off. So it's you have more or less of a choice. You don't want to have 100 tables for them to pick from. <laughs> did, mm. did I see correctly that Indy will also be coming to the Williams app? It is. Okay. Mm. That's good. Yep. All right, I got to make sure I have my coins then enough to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I used to always have a, 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 I'd always have enough surplus to in store, so that then you know it'd take about three weeks to unlock everything, and then I'd always have the coins to be able to upgrade to the next, you know, to get it up to level four or whatever. And then when it was like, oh, we're not doing it anymore, I'm like, ah, okay, well, I don't need to have a collection of those anymore, but I need to obviously make sure I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it'll be there. And, and if it wasn't clear all day and date, we're not releasing one, but you know, PFX, PX, FX three and Williams should all be the same day. Uh, I think that's important for the hype aspect. Uh, Cause then everybody's having the same conversation as opposed to some people being angry yeah. that they can't be in the conversation. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, Let's talk about a little bit about, the Funko Pinboy Royale in Zen Pinball Party. 
uh, a lot of people are wondering, is this what the Pinball Royale in Pinball FX is going to be like? Or is this kind of like the test version of what eventually we'll be getting? Um, I'd say there's going to be, it. you know, if I was to say that there's no similarities or some pieces that are the same, you know, like that's true. But this is a version for Zen Pinball Party and it's it's four player um pinball royale will be much bigger yes <laughs> um, the, the plan for royale is to scale it up though um to see to see what the limit is it'd be our our vision for the final version of it is like 64 player okay and, wow. mm. uh, we don't want to turn that on day one because in, in case there's not 64 players trying to get in it's gonna it's, you know that's yeah. a problem yeah, so we'll be I think we're gonna start we'll probably go from like four to eight to 16 to 32 mm. and if there's demand to 64 so we really just we don't want there to be people waiting to get into matches we don't want matchmaking right. to be you know just sitting there waiting time out so we're going to scale it up and see how many people want to be in a match together i have found that with um uh, zen people party being in the other side of the world um when i'm sort of late at night say around 10 o'clock at night i am finding that i am waiting a little while to actually find matchups in the game so I'd imagine that probably limiting matches based on time as well could be something to consider, um, you know, and actually try to get like the the play count down to a certain level um, at a certain time because it's really hard. Like time zones are hard. This is going to be a worldwide game, so you know, finding someone up at the same time as you could be tricky, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, it, yeah, it is. Um, it is. You know. I think what we're trying, what we're hoping for to see is that uh, we are appealing to certain kind of streaming demographic that will say, hey, pinball is a game I want to play. I want to stream this. And you, you bring in a bunch of other people who are like, I don't want to play a single player pinball game. You know, I'm just hitting balls around, but I, it's fun to like be playing against other people in this kind of chaotic format. And so, uh, you know, we are trying to grow audience. We're always going to, you know, make sure we have plenty of pinball games and awesome licenses and stuff that our traditional players want, but we are trying to grow audience. And this is one way um, that we're going to test and see what happens with it. Mm. Curious to know also just your, <laughs> I got to imagine in terms of kind of leaning more towards the, uh, the one up arcade side of things here. And I know obviously that uh, there's plenty that you cannot talk about because that's one ups, you know, deal. Um, but do they look at something like Pinball Party and go, hey, can we get that in a cabinet form? And I'm talking about more of that socialized play of pinball. Sure. Yeah, and I mean, we look at having an arcade one-up machine in somebody's home is a huge opportunity. First of all, people trusted us to invest so much money in something. Two, mm -hmm. um, look, there's 10 games on it right now, but there's a lot of other games that could be on that machine and a lot of other things that they could do with that machine. I'd like to, to continue to increase the value of, of the machine um, and, and uh, keep people connected to it and let them experience all the fun game modes and social features and multiplayer action that we're developing right now. Um, you know, so of course they ask us, Hey, when can we, you know, bring this over to, um, to the platform and you know there's going to be announcements i think at some point next year with a one up for uh, new things and uh the, yeah it, it's all you know whenever we find a good new feature a, a piece of new content that really resonates I, it's there's no question everybody all of our partners want it so <laughs> i was gonna say i gotta imagine that they're salivating mm -hmm. at having an indie table <laughs> oh, yeah. everybody mean... is yeah <laughs> Well, I mean, we thought previously that, that Jurassic Park would be a natural next machine, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and put universal titles. But just having, obviously, since Stern has two different Jurassic Park machines, you know, it would be a, a natural kind of like, ooh, that'd be cool to have in the house. Um, mm -hmm. I, that kind of brings up something. So Stern has, they obviously just created this The Pin version of Jurassic Park. And by the looks of it, it almost feels like a late 80s, early 90s design and, and play. Um, and I'm kind of just, what is your what is your take on Stern's the pin <laughs> version of things? Um, 
I well, don't know how I'm, I'm, they're I'm trying not phrasing to get to that a lower, good question, but no. <laughs> it's a strategy. I mean, they're trying to get to a lower price point because there's consumers who can't afford or don't have the space for the full size one. I think this one's more about price point. Yeah. They're trying to find out where can they be to grow new audience? You know, it's the same thing. We're all trying to grow audience. Um, it's much easier for us to, to do that because our price points are significantly lower. Yeah. Um, and we have, we can offer many things on one machine, whereas they offer one thing on one machine, the new insider program though, or, uh, the connectivity thing is cool. I think, you know, that they're trying to become and do things that video games do. Meanwhile, we're doing things that video games do already. And we're just finding form factors that are affordable for people to get a real, uh, like a more real feel for their game room. Right. So I think it's, you know, I think it's easier for us to go up and then it is for them to come down. Hmm. You've got some uh, new designers at Zen. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I think we've now seen content from all of them. So if I'm not, it's Anna and Dolby and uh, Peter. I'm not sure what his nickname is. <laughs> yeah. uh, is there anybody else that I'm that I'm missing that are of the new designers? Those are the new ones. We're uh, actually we have a new one starting in January. He's okay. been at Zen for a while, and uh, so he's moving over from a different uh, part of, of Zen, and he's going to be a designer. So those were the new ones you named. So yeah, I think we've got six. That gives us six now uh, active. Um, if you know any more, we're we're trying to get to twelve. Oh wow! So. Would you say that Zen Pinball Party? Uh specifically with these new tables, this is kind of a, uh, a good uh, landing spot to get them up and running and how to create their own layout uh, without it being you know full of all the bells and whistles and all the deep rule sets and everything else that goes along with uh, a typical Zen table. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yep. <laughs> mm, yeah, it's good, but it works. It's perfect because um, that ecosystem does really well with games that are there, the ones that you're seeing there. Yeah. And uh, that's not to say that they're any lesser or any anything, but it's just different. And it and it they they work really well there. And uh, the designers get um, good experience working on on those games. Because even I mean I know that me and Jared talked about it, like a game like How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, right now, the code is very uh, let's just call it simple. Uh, you know. It's do this, this, and this, repeat. Do this, this, and this, repeat. And yet there's a lot of aspects on the table that it feels like a more complicated code could be laid over the top of it using the exact same layout, but now all of a sudden you have a really deep rule set version of the table. Um, I don't know if that's intentional on your guys' part, but it certainly seems like it has that potential. Can't say too much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Sometimes we try to uh, slide in <clears throat> things and see if Mel will slip up. Um, <laughs> it rarely happens. It rarely happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say, One look, thing. we're 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 very intentional. I I still laugh sometimes about how I mean we've been making pinball games now for over a decade, and people talk to us like we don't know what we're doing, right? <laughs> yeah. And, but then they also don't understand our, our what our challenges are as a business, and what our um, what we intend to do as a business is to have many, many more pinball players globally. Yeah. And so you have to do, you, there are certain strategies that we're implementing to make sure that this happens. I know there's Speaking not much you can talk about uh, on the VR front, uh, but having worked with, you know, the, what you've seen with the, the Mandalorian table and Star Wars collectibles and dealing with, uh, you know, this, the Oculus realm of things. And I mean, even to the point that if we go back to our, oops, not that page. Hold on. i got to get up my proper screen here. There we go. Um, the, this lobby that you guys have for Pinball FX sure does look very similar to a certain Star Wars lobby that we're used to here. Um, I'm just kind of curious to know where we are. Is VR still moving forward? Do we have plans that are just going to be revealed a little bit later um, for those of mm -hmm. us that are thinking of you know spending Christmas money on a headset? Like me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, I, I can't announce anything or sure. say anything today, but um, we are we are in VR. Like, there's no, no way to, that to say, like, Zen is not going to do VR in the future, and that's not a, a big part of what we want to do in the future. Step by step, um, 
Pinball FX is going to be a big platform that will last a long time. And I can see a day when we have VR support, you know? So um, we found that with Star Wars VR, the fan cave was a really big draw and it was really well received and people really liked it. Yeah. And so we, we took that as a building block and we said, okay, well, if people like that, let's make sure that we, you know, there's no reason to start from scratch if we want to try to do this again sometime. So, um, you know, that probably said enough there. I know I'd like mm. to put in the personal pitch and maybe this is, I mean, I, we'd love to be a fly on the wall during one of your whiteboard sessions for brainstormings <laughs> and, you know, for these things. But it's the, specifically with that lobby, when you have the table just sitting there, Oh, I'd love to be able to have a track mode going on for the Williams stuff. Um, when that eventually, you know, ha I don't know if that's, like I said, since it looks familiar, I imagine this is what's going to be like in pin effects. Um, but to be able to have, and I know a lot of people have been asking this in general, just having the attract sounds of a particular table going off, um, that would be a wonderful thing. And then even if that table is the one that's loaded, to be able to have the ROM state stay in between each game until you load in the next table. Yeah. I think we've got something that we're working on that will uh, give you what you want. Yay. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. What's the What's the other thing we're always asking for, Jared? Oh, yeah. Uh, the blockade team in a uh, uh, super... Uh, uh, super League football. Super League football. Yeah, that's yes. right. We want, <laughs> we want an official blockade team in there uh, if that eventually comes back to things. Because we always have to mention that to you. Um, <laughs> well, there's a big event happening next year. A little uh, World Cup on. thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I imagine that if you time things right. Um, I know that whenever the NBA finals come around, I'm always like, Come on, fast break. Fast break on. time. Let's get it out. <laughs> yeah. um, what else do we got, Jared? Do you have any other things that uh, I'm trying to think that we wanted to touch upon with Mel? Mm, I don't think so, really. I think uh, we've... Uh, wait a second, <laughs> I know. The beer. How did oh, yeah, that... The beer. Whose idea was that? Was that Zen approaching I got, them? I got, you see like my cans in the background? Of yes. I got one, one two, three. <laughs> <laughs> The full set, um, yeah. No, well, what was happening? Um, we were just so we, we've been dipping our toes in merch, we've never really done it. We've, yeah, had small, we had Zen slippers, we've had some Star Wars pinball t shirts, we've had some other little things, and mostly we've just given it away. And um, we didn't want to just do like we wanted to do something fun. Uh, we got in, we, we, I don't know, we just thought that beer would be fun because pinball and beer have always gone together, sure. Mm. Uh, we, we somehow met the guys from Birdfish who ha were fans of our game, also really in the pinball scene in Ohio, have pinball tournaments at their their, their bar, at their brewery. Um, we just started talking. We we're like, let's do pinball-inspired beer. No one's done this. Uh, would be fun. And let's just do a couple of uh, trials to see what happens. So we made three. Um, one in conjunction with the IFPA, which I thought was really cool because we have the three um, you know, the, the three guys on there who are right. the, the top players right now. So it kind of made it a little more into grounded into real world stuff. Mm -hmm. They're all very good designs. I think they embrace pinball culture. There are own recipes and brews. Um, so it's been a really fun collaboration and, um, it's just, it's setting the stage for something else that should be happening sometime next year. Um, and so, yeah, we wanted to just approach mer like call it merch or, you know, derivative products some way, just from a different angle and perspective and, Maybe be a little uh, surprising. So, I, I love how much there's stuff that you want to talk about that you can't talk about, and it's like seems like it's not just one or two things. There's just like so a many tsunami of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we doubled the size of the company in less than a year. So I hope you know and at some point. COVID. <laughs> yeah, and you mentioned earlier on that everybody got back in the office. No, we're not back in the office yet. We only come oh, really? together only come together for special occasions, holiday party, or um, uh, we need to have like a all hands company, like big speech or something like that. Everyone's still remote working from home. Wow. So it's no really actually quite impressive what our uh, company did this last year. Uh, we have really, really great guys and, and team members, girls. And we have a lot, we have a lot of girls now on, on board, which is cool because mm. we, were, we were diversifying. We're it's just it's it's really great what's happened at Zen over the last year. Um, at some point, it's going you're going to see the output result from that. We're gonna we're gonna get there. Um, we're we're just about there, and uh, it's it's I'm just so excited about what's happening. 
Well, this is what I like is that it it seems like the success that you guys have had, you're reinvesting it into the company to promote even further success rather than resting on your laurels and going, no, nah, we're good, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, we're about, uh, you know, we announced our acquisition now just over a year ago. Did I just freeze? Yeah, okay. no, I froze. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I believe we announced the acquisition. It was either October or November of last year. The deal formally closed, I believe it was in January. Um, and it has just been like, this is where we knew we needed to go. It's like Zen, like guys, I need to double the company, but it's really scary to do it just as Zen. And then we found this awesome partner who's like, Zen, we also believe that you should double the company probably even more. Let's just go do it. Don't worry about it. Just do it. And so that's what we did. And, I imagine uh, there's a, uh, uh, outside of pinball, that there's other just Zen video games that are on the, the pipeline too. Yeah, actually, we announced a new RPG, um, Circus Electric. That was announced. Uh, man, we've had a very busy end of year. Like right after the Game Awards, we announced an RPG. Then we released Garfield. Then we announced Indie. So um, that's all happening. And then we have other non uh, one other non pinball project in development right now. Wow. But uh, two thirds to even a little more is all pinball, and we're not like still not. We need more more people. Um, yeah. So we're out aggressively looking. <laughs> uh, with, with merch, me and Jared agree that because uh, this came with the Birdfish uh, brewery stuff was the little coin holder. I think solid piece of merchandising right there. If you had the Zen logo on one of these for, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Jared wound up buying some and slapping Netherworld logos all over his. I did. I actually <laughs> went out looking at that bit of merch. I went, oh, I have to have one of those. So I went out there and got like a... Uh, a euro coin tube because that's the token size that netherworld uses and i painted it black and i slapped the sticker on i had some stickers and they just look so good um as a merchandise tool and everyone wanted one when i showed them i think even netherworld when i showed them the prototype of it they went oh we have to get those done like it's oh. so cool so yeah, yeah that's, a good, that's, a, that's a good idea yeah zen ones of those would be very very good yes yeah um I'm looking at my list here. I think we touched. I think upon, we're done. We I think we touched it. upon everything there, Mel. Uh, mm. Good. As well, usual, I know but we always say let's let's not wait uh, nine months to do this again, but I, <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> yeah, I think we tried to get together a while, but it's just been wild. It's been a while. I think we tried about a here. month and a half ago is when we started reaching out, trying to see uh, what dates would align, and I mean, clearly, <laughs> it took not. a while. <laughs> There's not a lot of downtime right now, but I, I can't say it's uh you know, I don't mind it. Like this is, mm. this is what I think of. I don't know. Everybody here has been dreaming about for a while. So it's all happening. What and, are, uh, uh, let's, let's finish off with maybe some events that uh, Zen might be making an appearance at in the uh, coming year. Okay. Uh, E3. If um, that's a thing. I don't if know. it's a thing, maybe, maybe if it's a thing. Uh, Consumer electronic show. We're not at CES this year, no. Okay. Um, are there any pinball festivals that you guys have uh, attached yourselves to? Uh, look for Pinball Expo. Okay. I think that I think we're going to do a big thing at Pinball Expo. And there's Star Wars Celebration. Star Wars Celebration. Okay. Yep. Yeah. We're planning to be there. Um, and let's see. There's other... We're getting uh, a lot of requests. So part of what's going to happen in FX is going to give us opportunity to uh, tie things together in real world events. Oh, nice. Um, right. So that's really what we're working towards. And then everybody, if we have something happening at an event, say a tournament or like a really fun event, we can also have it live in game. So everybody, if you can't come to pinball expo, you can still participate and feel like you're a part of it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So obviously we can't ask you what licenses you would like to see within pinball effects uh, or just as a Zen table in general. But I think uh, me and Jared can. So let's <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll throw out some suggestions. The Witcher seems like it'd be a wonderful addition to uh, pinball effects. Mm. Uh, as would, well, gee, now that you've got indie, I know there's an indie 5 movie coming on. So maybe that would be a good thing to, uh, you know, continue those licensing talks. Uh, same thing. I'm shocked, actually, to this day, there's not a Matrix pinball. Yeah, me too. It boggles my mind why there isn't. Um, and then the biggest and a diehard one... pinball as well. Like that diehard trilogy is 
begging for a, an actual pinball thing. Like, With a roof that explodes, by the way. Um, indeed. Yes. <laughs> and, and then I think the biggest one that, that I've said for years, why there's not a Quidditch pinball, well, Harry Potter pinball in general, but mm. Quidditch specifically is so ripe for pinball, it's ridiculous. But yeah. anyway, just throwing out some requests. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well... You're like, uh-huh. Good, good, good request. <laughs> yeah. Good request. <laughs> Cannot confirm or deny. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We, we always have to throw those in. All right, Mel. Um, we're going to let you go now, but uh, it's been a pleasure. We're so glad that you took the time to uh, to join us. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be talking to you soon. Cool, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All righty. So that's it, folks. Uh me and Jared, we're not sure if we're taking the rest of the year off or if we'll have yet another show right before the new year, but uh, we'll let you know uh, either way. Mm. Uh, when we do have that show, though, we'll be talking about all those things that Jared loves so much, which are... Stuff and things. Until next time. Bye-bye. See you later.